The Lucid Air is the longest range electric vehicle available today. It's also one of the best charging EVs that you can buy. Now, just last week, I did my 70 mile an hour highway range test with a 2024 Lucid Air Grand Touring and finished up with 463 miles at a constant 70 miles an hour. Shortly after that, I took the vehicle to a 350 kilowatt EVgo DC fast charger and recorded a full zero to 100% charging session, which we're gonna analyze today to try to figure out if the air is indeed the best DC fast charging electric vehicle you can buy. So let's get into it. State of Charge is powered by Qmerit. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charging equipment you're going to buy, Follow the link in the description of my videos and let the EV charging installation professionals at Qmerit install it. So the Lucid Air Grand Touring that I used for these tests is a 2024 and it has total capacity of 118 kilowatt hours in the battery pack. However, during my range test, I was only able to access 111 kilowatt hour. Well, that's at least what the in-screen displayed that I used 111 kilowatt hour. Now I reached out to Lucid and they told me that there was actually about four kilowatt hour more in the pack that I could have accessed at the time. Um, but uh, it was late at night and uh, I had already driven about three miles after the vehicle said 0% uh, state of charge and gave me critical battery warning. So I didn't want to run out in the middle of nowhere at like 1.40 in the morning. So I ended the range test there. But Lucid told me that there was some more energy left in the pack. So when I did this DC fast charging test, I tried to drain the battery a little bit further. So I drove more after the state of charge reached zero to try to drain it as much as possible. Uh, and I believe I got a little bit closer to true empty without running out. So before we go into any of the analyzing, Let's take a look at the full charge recording from zero to 100% on a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger on the EVgo network. Out of the gate, the air immediately starts taking in 255 kilowatt. And by the one minute mark, it's now up to 295 kilowatt. It continues to climb until we achieve this charging session's peak charging rate of a whopping 319 kilowatt at the 2 minutes and 18 second point. But then at 2 minutes and 30 seconds, we see the charging rate start to drop. And at 4 minutes and 15 seconds, when the air is at 17% state of charge, the charging power now drops below 300 kilowatt. When the air is at 30% state of charge, it's now taking in a robust 250 kilowatt and less than eight minutes have passed. It's accepted 37 kilowatt hour at this point, which is good for well over 100 miles of highway driving range. The air continues to slowly ramp down its charge rate until the state of charge is at 41%. And that happens at the 11 minute point and the air has already accepted more than 50 kilowatt hour, which is good for nearly 200 miles of highway driving range. But that's when I ran into a little trouble. The air started ramping down its power intake faster than what I would have expected for the next five minutes until it bottomed out at 123 kilowatts at 52% state of charge. Now after this recording, I reached out to Lucid to ask if this drop is normal or if the vehicle was temporarily lowering its power intake because of thermal management. Lucid's engineering team was able to dial into the vehicle remotely and pull the data and confirmed, yes, it was likely due to heat. So after that five minute drop, the charging rate started to climb back up to 140 kilowatt and held that until the state of charge was around 76% when it started dropping again, and when the state of charge was at 80%, it was only pulling 112 kilowatt. Now I say only pulling 112 kilowatt, a little tongue in cheek, because most other EV owners would love if their EVs were accepting over 100 kilowatt at 80% state of charge. Then at 83% state of charge, the charging rate levels off at around 80 kilowatt, and it holds that for a while. It holds it till about 91% state of charge, and then it begins its 
final nearly linear drop off down to 100% state of charge. As is the case with most electric vehicles, once you get over 90%, the charging rate really slows down. And you can see here, it took me 30 minutes to go from 90% to 100% state of charge. We finished up the full zero to 100% charging session in 70 minutes, and the charging station dispensed 126.6 kilowatt hour. So wow, uh, in the beginning of that charging session, that EVgo station was just pumping those kilowatt hours into the pack. I mean, to get that amount of power in such a short period of time really makes the vehicle such a great road tripper. There's no need in most cases to stay longer than 15 or 20 minutes if you indeed plug in at a low state of charge. Okay, so um, that's great looking at it in time lapse, but when you put it on paper, you get even a clearer picture of what the charging curve looked like and what happened during that period when the vehicle was requesting less power. So let's take a look at the charging power graph next. So the charging power graph has the state of charge on the x-axis and the charging power in kilowatt on the y-axis. The session began with the air pulling about 260 kilowatt and climbed up to the 319 kilowatt peak rate at about 10% state of charge, which happened after only two minutes of charging. That's when it began an almost perfectly linear drop until 42% state of charge, which is when it experienced that thermal derating for five minutes until the vehicle cooled off whatever hit its thermal limit and needed to be cooled off and the air started accepting more power and leveled off at around 140 kilowatt until around 75 percent state of charge it then dropped down to around 80 kilowatt at 84 percent state of charge and held that until about 91 percent state of charge before the final linear drop off you can see here all the way to 100 percent now even with the five minute derating this is a monster charging curve. The air went from zero to 80% in under 32 minutes and added 97.4 kilowatt hour in that time. And that's an average of charging at 183 kilowatt for the entire zero to 80% of this charging session, which is outstanding. And if you wanna go back to charging to 50%, we got to 50% in just about 15 minutes. And in that period from zero to 50%, the air took in an average of 240 kilowatts. So you could go about 230, 240 miles with 15 minutes of charging time. The only other electric vehicles that can add that much power in that little amount of time are the Chevy Silverado EV and the Porsche Taycan. My friend Kyle Connor from Outer Spec recorded the new Taycan adding 97.5 kilowatt in 28 minutes, almost four minutes faster than the air did here. Now I wonder how much time would have been shaved off if I had recorded this on a cooler day and the vehicle didn't have that five minute thermal event. The charging curve would have probably looked something like this and all that red is kilowatt hour that could have gone into the pack. I suspect this caused the charging session to be about one to two minutes longer than it could have if that didn't happen. And next up, let's take a look at the time to charge chart, which gives you a better idea of how long you have to stay to add back a certain amount of miles. And I'll use the EPA miles as well as the range I achieved on my 70 mile an hour high range test so you could see the difference between what EPA states and what I actually witnessed at 70 miles an hour. So the charging power graph has the charging time in minutes on the X axis and the state of charge on the Y axis. As you can see, the charging session lasted 70 minutes, an hour and 10 minutes, but the first 35 minutes, the air charged from zero to 85%. It then took the same 35 minutes to add the final 15%, proving once again that staying on a DC fast charger past 80% is not worth your time unless you absolutely need the range. Now let's take a look at how long it takes to add 100, 200, 300, and 400 miles of range. Because honestly, most EV owners don't care if they charge to 70% or 80% or whatever when they're on a road trip and charging on a DC fast charger. They just wanna know how much range they're getting so they can make their destination. 
So I used the AIRS EPA range figure of 516 miles. To be clear, this is the AIR Grand Touring with the 19 inch wheels. That's the vehicle that I tested, it has the highest rated range of any AIR vehicle, which is 516 miles. As well as my 70 mile an hour highway range test, the results of which was 463 miles. I used them both for comparison. Now the air replenished 100 miles of range in under five minutes for the EPA range rating. And it took about five and a half minutes if you wanna use my 70 mile an hour highway range test results. 200 miles was added in 10.5 minutes for the EPA and about 12 minutes at my 70 mile an hour range test. 300 miles comes along in 20 minutes for the EPA range rating. That's fantastic, 300 miles in 20 minutes. And it took 23 and three quarter minutes if you wanna use my 70 mile an hour range test results. 400 miles of EPA rated range was added in 30 minutes. 400 miles in 30 minutes. 400 miles is farther than almost any other electric vehicle on the market can go to begin with. And the air can add it in 30 minutes. While it took just under 37 minutes, if you want to use my range test results. And finally, let's look at how many miles per minute were added in 10 minute increments. This really demonstrates how much faster EVs charge at lower states of charge and why you should unplug once you have enough range and you're at a higher state of charge. Look at the first 10 minutes of charging. The air added 19.1 and 17.1 miles of range per minute for the EPA and my range test, respectively. The second 10 minutes, it was 10.8 miles of range per minute and 9.8 miles of range. From the 20 minute to the 30 minute point, it dropped to 9.8 and 8.8 .8 miles per minute. And this is where you really get diminishing returns on your time spent charging. Because at the 30 minute point, the air was already at 77% state of charge and really slowing down its charge rate. So from 30 minutes to 40 minutes, the air only adds 6.7 and 6.0 miles per minute respectively. From 40 minutes to 50 minutes, it's charging at 2.1 and 1.8 miles per minute, nearly 10 times slower than the first 10 minutes. Then from 50 minutes to one hour, it's down to 1.6 and 1.4 miles per minute. And then the final 10 minutes, it was just about the same with the air taking in 1.5 and 1.4 miles per minute respectively. So we've established that the Lucid Air Grand Touring is the longest range electric vehicle that you can buy today. Easily going more than 450 miles uh, at highway speeds. We're at 70 miles an hour like I did. Uh, I came up with 463 miles in my range test. Lucid told me there was still about four kilowatt hours left in the pack when I finished my range test. So I, I hypothetically could have taken it up to about 485 uh, miles uh, on that 70 mile an hour highway range test. So, uh, you know, it didn't need those extra 20 miles or so. It's the longest range electric vehicle there is. But is it the best fast charging electric vehicle that there is? Well, that's going to depend on what your criteria for fast charging is and what makes the vehicle the best fast charging vehicle. If you go sheerly on how much uh, power gets put into the battery pack, how quickly you can pump in kilowatt hours, then the air isn't the best DC fast charging electric vehicle. The Porsche Taycan and uh, the Chevy Silverado EV, for instance, are two electric vehicles that can actually uh, put kilowatt hour in the pack faster. Uh, now the Silverado EV's got a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, so it should be able to sustain higher charging for longer periods of time. Uh, I've seen videos online where people have added 100 kilowatt hours in 18 minutes. In this DC fast charge test with the air, I was able to put in 66.5 kilowatt hours in 18 minutes. Still an incredible amount of energy, but you know, look at it against 100 kilowatt hours. Now, the air can go about 250 miles at highway speeds with 66.5 kilowatt hour. The Silverado EV um, can go about 200 miles. So yeah, it, it can pump the power in faster, but 
is it a better charging vehicle? Shouldn't you consider how far it can go with the power? Some people do, some people don't. The Taycan's another vehicle uh, that can add kilowatt hour faster. Um, I referenced Kyle's video before, and in uh, Kyle's video, the uh, Tycom was able to charge to 50%, from zero to 50% in nine minutes. And in that span, it added 50 kilowatt hours of energy. And that's good for about 160 miles at 70 miles an hour. Now the air after nine minutes had only pumped in, uh, had only gotten up to 34% state of charge, but it has a bigger battery. So you can't really go the 50% to the 34%. Um, you have to look at how much power got put in and it had added 42 kilowatt hours. So 42 compared to 50, the Tycom wins, it added more power, but the air can go about 175 miles with that 42 kilowatt hour, whereas the Taycan can only go about 160 miles. So um, the Taycan wins on the amount of power. It charged faster, put more uh, energy into the pack. But I think most people, when they're on a road trip, are more concerned with, well, how long do I have to stay here to add 100 miles or 200 miles or whatever it is to get you to your destination or to the next charger. Uh, I don't think people really care that much. Oh, well, I added 80 kilowatt hours or I added 90 kilowatt hours. They need to know how much range they're adding because that's really all that matters when you're on a road trip. So I'm certain that there's some people that'll look at the air and say it delivers the most miles per minute of charging through the entire charging curve than either the Silverado or the uh, Taycan. However, the Taycan and the Silverado add more power quickly and hold a, a higher charging rate longer than the air does. So there's going to be people that say, well, that, that charge is better. I don't care about the efficiency of the vehicle. I just want to know which vehicles can charge the fastest, put in the most kilowatt hour after 10 minutes, 20 minutes or whatever. In that case, both the Silverado and the Taycan win. So I'll let you decide what you consider to be the best DC fast charging electric vehicle. These three are at the top of the class. They're really um, nothing else out there that's better than, than these vehicles as far as I'm concerned with DC fast charging. Now there are some electric vehicles in China that appear to be even faster, but until we can get over there and validate that and test them, uh, I'll talk about them and I'll say, geez, I can't wait to try these out, but I need to go over there and actually see it with my own two eyes and record it before I'm willing to say, look, this is the fastest charging electric vehicle that I ever tested because uh, I haven't been able to test them. I have been invited over to China uh, in a couple of months uh, so let's see if that uh, comes to fruition. If it does, I'm going to try to spend a little bit extra time over there and uh, get in touch with some of the manufacturers that have some of these ultra fast charging EVs, see if they'll let me take one out to do some uh, charge recordings. Uh, but that's it for my Lucid Air DC fast charge uh, review and video. Um, it's a beast. It charges Amazingly, whether or not you think it's better or not as good as the Silverado or the Taycan, it's top of class. These vehicles, all these vehicles just charge like beasts. And uh, the air's combination of its efficiency and ultra long range with this DC fast charging capability make it, you know, one of the best road tripping electric vehicles that you could possibly have. Um, well, that's it for the review here today. Please let me know what you think about DC fast charging and what your criteria is on what makes a car uh, the best DC fast charging vehicle in the comment section below. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.